Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. High in the Scottish Highlands, amidst the misty peaks and rolling hills, lies Buchaelid of Moor. This imposing mountain is a sight to behold, with its rugged terrain and majestic slopes that seem to stretch up to the heavens. It's a place that has captured the imagination of many, and for good reason. There is a mystery that lingers in the air, a sense that there is more to this mountain than meets the eye. Legend has it that there is a pyramid hidden somewhere on the slopes of Buchaelid of Moor. Some say that it was built by the ancient people who lived in these parts long before recorded history. Others believe that it was constructed by a group of outsiders who came to Scotland and brought with them a technology that was far beyond anything the locals had ever seen. The truth is shrouded in mystery, but there are those who believe that the pyramid was built using a technique that was developed in Scotland long before the Egyptian pyramids were even a glimmer in their builders' eyes. On the island of Orkney, off the northeast coast of Scotland, there is evidence that people were cladding their buildings in white quartz as early as 3800 BC. This technique, known as dry stone cladding, involved carefully placing thin layers of stone on the outside of buildings without the use of mortar. The Orkney Islanders were not the only people to use this technique however. The ancient Egyptians also used dry stone cladding on their pyramids, and there is no evidence to suggest that they developed this technique independently. Some researchers believe that the Orkney people may have taken the technology to Egypt via Crete, as they were known to travel extensively by sea. Could it be that the pyramid on Buchaelid of Moor was built using the same technique? It's certainly possible. The mountain is known for its rugged terrain and challenging conditions, and building a pyramid on its slopes would have been no easy feat. But if the people who built it had access to a technology that allowed them to clad the outside of the pyramid in stone without the need for mortar, it would have made the task much more manageable. Of course, there is no concrete evidence to support this theory. The pyramid on Buchaelid of Moor remains a mystery, and it may be that we will never know for sure how it was built or who built it. But the idea that the technology used to build the most iconic structures of ancient Egypt may have originated in Scotland is a tantalizing one. What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The legend of King Arthur and his sword in the stone has captivated people's imaginations for centuries. Many have searched high and low for the mythical weapon, hoping to lay claim to the power and prestige that comes with wielding it. However, what many do not realize is that the sword in the stone actually exists, and it is not located in the mystical realm of Avalon as the legend suggests. Instead, the sword can be found in a small chapel in Tuscany, Italy, near the St. Galgano Abbey in Chiestino. The Montesiepi Chapel, which dates back to the 12th century, is home to the legendary sword and stone. Unlike the stories of King Arthur, the sword is not stuck in the stone, but rather the hilt is embedded into the rock, giving the impression that it has been thrust into the stone. Although the sword has been on display for years, it wasn't until recently that scientists discovered something peculiar about the sword. Upon examining it, they found that there is some kind of void underneath the hilt, leading to speculation about what might be hidden beneath the rock. The church authorities, however, have not yet given permission to move the stone, so researchers are left to wonder what secrets the sword may hold. What do you think about the researchers?
the discovery of the Dame of Mali was a momentous occasion for the archaeological community. It was not only the tallest statue in the world, but also one of the most enigmatic. The statue stood at a staggering 150 meters tall and was estimated to be at least 20,000 years old. The figure was carved into a granite mountain on the border between Guinea and Mali, making it difficult to access. The first group of archaeologists that set out to investigate the statue was made up of a team of experts from around the world. They arrived at the foot of the mountain, eager to unravel the mysteries of this colossal statue. The team spent weeks making their way up the mountain, using ropes, harnesses, and climbing equipment to scale the sheer cliffs that surrounded the statue. As they approached the top, they saw the statue's immense size and realized they were standing in the presence of something truly remarkable. The Dame of Mully was unlike anything they had ever seen before. It was an awe-inspiring sight, its sheer size and beauty, a testament to the Paleolithic civilization that had created it. Of course, they said that the statue was carved out of the mountain using primitive tools, such as stone hammers and chisels. But the question that remained was, who were the people that created the Dame of Mali, and why did they go to such great lengths to create such a massive statue? The team spent months studying the surrounding area, searching for clues to answer these questions, and only came to the conclusion that the statue was made by hammer and chisel. Great. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.